Hello everyone, welcome back to the Canadian Young Physicist Tournament YouTube channel. Today we're bringing you the top 10 smartphone apps that will help you in your physics experiments. The 10 smartphone apps will be divided into 3 categories, Experiment, Calculator, and References. So first let's take a look at our Experiment apps. The first app that I will be introducing to you is called Spectroid. It is a frequency analyzer that uses Fourier transform to change the signal from the microphone from the time domain to the frequency domain. When we open up the app, we are greeted with two graphs, the top one being an intensity versus frequency plot, and the bottom one being a waterfall graph. And in the bottom one, we see that the different colors represent the different intensities of sound at different frequencies. And we could test the effectiveness of this app by using a tone generator played by a different device. So if I play a simple sine wave of a frequency of 440 Hz, as we hear here, we see that there is a distinct peak, if I'm being quiet enough, at around about this region. So if I stop the sound, we see that the peak disappears, and in the waterfall graph, we can still see uh, the bright band that is created at this 440 Hz region. So this is how the frequency analyzer works. The second app that I want to introduce to you is called uh, the signal generator. It is the exact same app that I used for playing the sound that you heard previously. So in this app, you can produce sine waves, triangle waves, saw waves, square waves, and also noise. So uh, for the first four type of waves, you can alter the frequency of the sound, and you can also change how loud it is playing. And for the noise, you can choose between white noise, pink noise, and also brown noise. And if you click on these, you can see uh, the different waveforms that you're going to get. And this app comes in really handy when you need to generate some sort of signal for an experiment, perhaps uh, for an acoustics experiment, or you can even hook it up to, say, an oscilloscope. And I think this is one of the must-have apps on your smartphone. The third app that I will be introducing today is called Firefox. It is one of my favorite apps for use in a physics experiment. So. When we open up the app, we see that the app is divided into a few sections. We have raw sensors, acoustics, everyday life, mechanics, timer, tools. So in the raw sensor part, it essentially uses the sensors in your phone to capture data about the environment and about the phone itself. So here we have the accelerometer, the gyroscope, the light meter, the GPS, the magnetometer, and also the barometer. So if we click on one of these sensors, we can see that it shows uh, the data for the sensor that your smartphone actually measures. So here for the acceleration, since my tablet is on the table still, uh, the acceleration does not fluctuate by much. But if I lift it up and shake it around a little, we can see that the acceleration changes greatly. And this is the accelerometer measuring the acceleration of the tablet itself. So that means if you're doing an experiment, you have to actually fix your phone to the experiment in order to measure its acceleration. Here we have a graphical form, an absolute value, and also a simple form, which just shows the data. And what is great about this app is that you can always export your data into a comma-separated value format so that you can analyze it in Excel if you prefer. So looking at some of the other sections of this app, we see there is a special acoustic section. And uh, it could measure the amplitude of sound, it could do some auto-correction, it could look at the waveform of the sound. It also has its own frequency analyzer, which takes a look at the spectrum of sound. Uh, it also has its own tone generator. It also has some uh, more fancy features like the Doppler effect 
and sonar, which I do not think it is that useful, but you're free to play around with it if you want. The other more useful feature in this is uh, the inclination, which essentially turns your phone into a level. So this compares the accelerometer data to uh, the acceleration from gravity. And if your phone is actually on an incline, as you can see, if I lift my tablet up, you can see that the inclination angle actually increases. And you can use this to actually level out your experiment if your experiment is sensitive to its orientation. The next app that I will be introducing to you is called Vid Analysis. Uh, so this is a free version. You, you can also get the paid version without any ads. So this is the popsicle chain reaction video that I have made before. So you can either choose to start a new analysis or use an existing analysis. So we're going to start a new analysis. The so first you want to scroll your video to a point where you want to analyze. And we could click start analysis so then it prompts you to specify a known distance in your video so we can carefully pick two points in our video and by the look of things we have selected a total of uh, five centimeters so that will be 0 0.05 meters in reality you can set where you want your coordinate axes to be your x and y axes then you could uh, do your analysis by pressing every single frame of it. Say I want to track this popsicle stick right here, I could click on its center of mass point. Then it would automatically move to the next frame. Uh, it is a bit slow and it might not be the most accurate way to track it. But uh, with enough patience and time, you can definitely get this done. So. Without wasting too much time, we'll look at the analysis that I have done before. So this is an analysis that I have done before. As you can see, you can choose to see the time versus x, the time versus y, and also we see the x, y as well. So here I am looking at the uh, distance versus time. We could also take a look at the x, y. These are the points that I got. And if you look at the velocity, because the inaccuracies in where you actually place the dots, there might be a big spread, but there isn't too much concern about that because you can always analyze your errors. And this app also has the feature of uh, saving your analysis as a comma separated value file. So you can analyze that further by using an app like Excel if you wish. The next app that I want to bring your attention to is this app called HScope. It is essentially a way to connect your smartphone to an oscilloscope that you might have. It has to be one of uh, the specified models, but uh, your smartphone is just a great way to visualize it without using a computer screen. So here we have all of the normal features of a scope, and you can also choose to look at the Fourier transform so that you could take a look at things in the frequency domain if you wish. If you happen to have one of these oscilloscopes on hand, I think this app will be a great addition to your lab. So next, we'll look at the second section in our video, which is about the calculators. Here I have chosen three calculators, Desmos, a scientific calculator app, and also an emulator for the TI-84 calculator. So first, let's take a look at Desmos. I think we're all fairly familiar with it. You can plot some very complex, somewhat weird functions on here. It's just a great way to visualize how your functions are when you're doing some kind of theoretical derivation. And if you want to see whether or not your function actually has some problems or it actually matches with the trend that you're seeing. The second app in the calculator section is the scientific calculator. I prefer this app quite a bit because it has a variety of modes. It has a scientific mode, it has a mode with complex numbers, which you can see we have the I right here uh, on the right section of the calculator. We could also do some matrix calculations and also solve equations. We could solve uh, polynomial equations. So this comes in quite handy at times. 
So uh, there isn't actually a limit to uh, how many degrees you can put on this. So go at it however you want. And last but not least, this calculator also has a graphing feature, but I believe Desmos is just an overall better graphing software than this particular calculator. The last app in the calculator section is the TI-84 emulator. So here we see a quite an interesting representation of the TI-84 calculator. The advantages of the TI-84 is that you can do a lot of statistical analysis, whereas some of the other calculators might not have this particular feature. For example, we could uh, press the stats button and look at some of the data that I have entered before into the L1, the list 1. And if we click the stats button again, we could choose to calculate for this one bit variable stats. If you're familiar with the calculator, you should be better than me at using this. So if we press calculate, as you can see it shows quite a few values. It shows what the average is, what the variances are, what the standard deviation is. We see the number of elements, the min and max, the Q1, and the Q3, and also the median. So all the features that you will need for your one variable stats. As you know, for the TI-84, you can also do things like uh, Z-scores and T-tables and all of those things. It comes in handy when you're doing a lot of error analysis, as you will in your experiments. So the last section of our video will be focused on references. As you know, searching the web for that particular equation and that particular constant might not be the most interesting thing that you can spend your time on. So uh, here I have provided two apps for you to use that has all of your necessary equations and information in one place. The first app is called Physics Formula. And in here you can see a lot of formulas that you would use. So you can see every formula that you will ever need is probably here. You see error analysis and dimensional analysis. You have uh, work, energy, and power. You have things like simple harmonic motion, fluid dynamics, heat conduction, and also you have some optics, electricity, and magnetism. And at the end, we also have a list of universal constants. So this app will be very helpful when you're doing your experiments or doing theory when you want to perform some calculations and it is just all of your constants and equations that you will ever need in one place. It's quite convenient. The last app that I will be introducing to you to today is this electronics app. It is very similar to the uh, physics reference app before but it is focused on electronics. It is the actual components that you might need in your experiment. So the first is about the resistor color code, which I'm sure it's very hard to, to remember and it's just great to have an app so that if you find a resistor, you can quickly identify what is its resistance. We also have uh, some very useful features like the Arduino pinout diagram for the different Arduino uh, types. We also have some very classic integrated circuits like the 555 timer. Uh, we have things like uh, a voltage divider calculation. We have things to calculate the wire resistance, some decibel calculator, and also things like the reactance and the wavelength and frequency and all of those things. So even for an electrical engineer, I think this app will be very greatly helpful. And if your knowledge on electronics is not that much, I think it, this is also like a one-stop shop so that you can find all of the information that you need for any sort of component that you're using in your experiments. So that is pretty much it for today's video. Hope you liked it. Make sure to like and subscribe to the CAYPT YouTube channel. And next week, we'll be bringing you another video about the IYPT 2019 problems. So see you next week and bye.